You like my sign? Static friction. That's what we're going to talk about. Okay, so I'm going to do an experiment. This is going to be great. It's going to be so great. We're going to have a great time. So you've seen this. The frictional force is less than or equal to mu sub s times n. What does it all mean? How do we find it? That's what we're going to do. Okay, so let's start with this. So this is just a, a felt bottom uh, box. And clearly there's a frictional force. If I push it, it stops. Now, you could just rub this and you can feel the frictional force. If I push down harder, there's a greater frictional force. The mass didn't change, but it's this interaction between these two surfaces that actually cause it to have a greater frictional force. Now, this is just a model. I mean, really, you think about the atoms in this interacting with the atoms in here. It's really complicated, this kind of rubbing against each other. But we can model it quite simply with this. This model works really well. So I'm going to show you how to get this coefficient and show you how we model this. Okay, first let me show you what this less than or equal sign means. Okay, so here I have uh, a cart, and this one's actually cork on the bottom, it doesn't matter. Uh, but it does matter, but it doesn't. And so I'm going to pull it, and I'm going to measure the force as a function of time. I have here a force probe, uh, but you could use for all these experiments, you could use something like this. This is just a spring scale. It pulls and it measures the force, but it doesn't show up on the camera very well, so I'm not going to use that. Uh, so I'm going to pull this. I'm going to pull it with a certain force very slowly, and then we can see right here I have, I have a graph, and we can plot the force as a function of time, and let's just see what happens. Okay. Uh, hopefully this will work. I'm going to show it right here, and then I'm going to uh, move over here in just a second. Okay, so I'm going to hook this up. The rubber band is only there so that I pull with a smoother force. So I don't get any, it's not jerky. Um, you don't technically have to have that, but it helps. Okay, so I'm going to collect data. And I'm going to pull slow. Wasn't that great? Okay, look over here. Okay, so what happened was, as I first started pulling, it, the box moved over here. As I first started moving, I pulled with a greater and greater force, but the box still didn't move. Okay, so as long as it doesn't move, the net force in the box was zero. So this is why the frictional force is less than or equal to some constant. The frictional force, the static frictional force, does whatever it needs to do to keep that block stationary, to keep the two surfaces at rest relative to each other. So it increases up to some maximum level, and then it actually it actually drops down a little bit. Let's zoom in. It actually drops down a little bit once it starts to slide. I didn't pull really great, so it did increase. But you see that drop? That's important. This part right here, the uh, the block was sliding. So that's actually kinetic friction. That's something a little bit different. We're just looking at static friction in this particular example. But the important thing is you can't just calculate the frictional force. You can calculate the maximum frictional force. Uh, unless you know the other force pulling, then you can't do that. Okay, so what we're going to do is collect data. I'm going to uh, pull this and measure the maximum frictional force with this force probe. And then I'm going to change the mass and do it again, and change the mass and do it again. Every time I change the mass, I'm changing the weight. Why am I looking at that? I'm going to change the weight of this. And when I change the weight of this, that changes the normal force that pushes up. So here's, here's this diagram I made you. This should help. Put it right there. Okay. So this is the situation where it is not accelerating. So this is right before it starts to move. So I have four forces. I have the gravitational force pulling down, and the floor pushes up with the force in. Since the net force in the y direction is zero, it doesn't accelerate, then n minus mg is zero. Those are y components. So n is equal to mg. Over here, I'm pulling to the right, and friction is that way. And since it also has a zero acceleration in the x direction, these forces have to add up to zero. So f pull minus f friction is equal to zero. So if I find the value of the pulling force with the force probe, that's the frictional force. If I find the mass and multiply by 9.8 newtons per kilogram, I can find the normal force. So then I can see, is there truly a relationship between the normal force and the friction force? 
Let's do it. Okay, I started a little table here. I'm gonna write down the mass in grams, write down the force, and then we'll make a graph. Okay, so let's back this up so you can kind of see everything. You can still see the stuff. Okay, so let's start off with just the cart. And I don't know how well this is gonna work. Uh, that's 90 grams, I already measured it. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull the cart and I'm gonna measure the force uh, it takes to pull it. So it's at close to zero. Uh, can you see that if I pull? Well, if you can't see it, that's fine. So I'm getting a point 0.2. That's kind of weak, but let's see. Okay, now let's do, um, this is 200 grams. So this is gonna be 290. I'm gonna put this over here. You don't need to see that. 0.8. And this is really rough, right? This is really rough. Now let's do, um, let's add a 500. So that's gonna be 790. So 2.6, was that right? 2.3, I'd say 2.3. And since it's really rough, this is why it's important to have as many data points as possible. Add another 200, so now I'm at 990. And my force probe isn't zeroed, and that's okay, because I'm just getting rough data here. I'm going to say three. Um, and let's add the 500. So now that would be 1490. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to pull it. Let's see. Pull it right here. Maybe you can see. Four point five. One, two, three. I have five data points. You know that's not great, but I'm gonna go with it anyway. Okay. So let's let's make this. I'm gonna show you the graph that I'm gonna make, and then I'm gonna make the graph uh, in Logger Pro, and I'll switch. I'll switch cameras. Okay. So here we go. So I'm going to make a graph of. If I plot, if I have F friction max equals mu S in. Okay. This is the maximum friction force, so that's equal to, not less than or equal to. That's important. This is like Y equals MX plus B plus zero. So there's this, if I make it a straight line, if I plot this on my vertical and this on my horizontal, then this coefficient should be my slope. So I'm gonna make a graph that looks like this, F friction versus N. And the slope of that line, it should go through the origin and the slope of the line should be the coefficient. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. We are ready to make a graph. So I have Logger Pro pulled up here, and I'm going to use Logger Pro. Uh, my students have this, and it's a pretty good plotting program that makes sense. Of course, there's Plotly, there's Graph Paper, there's Excel, there's anything that you feel comfortable with making a graph. That's what you should use, but I'm just using this. Okay, and also I partially cheated. So over here, I have my mass and my uh, force data from the previous experiment, and then I converted this mass to a in grams to kilograms and multiplied by 9.8, and I got that right there. So this is my uh, force data, and they're both in Newtons. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go back over here to Logger Pro, and I'm going to paste that in. And so and I'm going to change this. So this is the frictional force, and this is called FF in units of Newtons. And then this is the, uh, the, the normal force in in, in, I know that's silly, but that's fine. Okay, and then I, remember I want the, I want the frictional force on the vertical axis, so I'm gonna switch this to frictional force, I'm gonna switch this to normal force, and then I'm going to zoom in, 
And now to fit a graph in, um, to fit a linear line to this, it looks linear, that's good. Uh, there's a linear function fit right here, boom, right there, and there you go. Look at that. A nice fit. The y-intercept is very close to zero. I could force it to be zero, but let's just leave it like that. Um, look how good this fits, right? It's such a nice fit, and I didn't even do a great job. But it does show a slope of 0 0.314 newtons per newton. That is the coefficient of friction for that particular materials interacting. So that was quark on that desktop. If you change that to Teflon, if you change that to felt, you should get a different coefficient of friction. So this will be fun to do this for three different materials and see that it works. Now, warning, if you want to go crazy, if you want to go crazy, okay, there is crazy stuff going on here. If you add a ton of mass, this function doesn't stay linear. It eventually levels off, and I think that is awesome. But you have to add a lot of mass. But it is fun to kind of like take this simple model and see if you can break it right and see how far it goes because it is a simplistic model but that's how you would collect some data and make this measurement to determine the coefficient of friction this is something that you do in the lab and you could do even more data points in this uh, it is important also that it's on a horizontal surface because if it's not horizontal the normal force is not the weight and you could calculate that but it's not true okay i will stop there and you guys have fun with the data